What's up, Mets fans? Emily Reppert here, and we are making yet another stop on our Ultimate Collection Tour with Rick from Long Island. Rick, thanks so much for having us. Emily, thank you for coming out. It's a pleasure. Well, we're excited to see your collection just from seeing the little preview. So let's start back with how you became a Mets fan. When I lived in Brooklyn, we used to take uh, tours with the youth groups to go to, to Shea Stadium. And one of my first experiences was going to Photo Day. And we got to go on the field, and actually I met uh, Ed Charles that day. And he took me around and, you know, kind of kicked some dirt at third base, so I was hooked after that. I'm a baseball fan in general. I love the history of baseball, but I really enjoy watching the Mets. I live and die with them like everybody else that wears the NY, so it's fun. What is it about the Mets? that stands out? You know, as much as a lot of years they're always figured to win, I, they're still the underdog. So, like, I'm a big Bud Harrelson fan. And in 1973, when Bud Harrelson had that altercation with Pete Rose, you know, it kind of, you know, the juices flew. I, I really wanted to be a Met fan and stand behind my Mets and Bud Harrelson. So I love everything about it. So you're a Mets fan, diehard fan, and now you've become a collector. How does one begin collecting? When I moved out onto Long Island, I got a job in a sporty goods store, a little mom and pop store. And one of the things we used to do is go to conventions. And we had them in New York City, Atlanta. And when you went there back in the 70s, you know, different athletes would endorse different products. So I had a whole collection of those from working in that shop for over the years. Tell me about that experience of going out and meeting these players, having them sign that. What does that do to a collection, having a story like that to mm -hmm. go with a piece? I like to just see the old players, like you know Bud Harrelson or Ed Cranepool, a couple of my favorites, and just shake their hand and say thank you for the memories. You know, I watched you know Ed Cranepool as he was considered young. He'd already been a 10-year player by the time I picked up on him. You know, and I got to meet him and actually have a conversation. It was just so nice to, you know, to put a human feeling onto these ball players that you see on TV. It was just an awesome feeling. So I do like to go to the shows and shake their hand and say thank you for the memories and, you know, get their autograph. Are there any other uh, of those interactions that stand out to you? So I've been pretty lucky. I've had quite a few times where I've met players over my life. I got to play uh, golf with Willie Mays. Wow. We were in a tournament together. He played with each foursome. I have some balls in a picture actually signed by him from that tournament. You know, I've been to uh, Ed Cranepool's home when he relocated, so I've bought some of his actual man cave memorabilia, which was fun, and got some pictures with him. You know, Gary Carter, who uh, was a manager for the Long Island Ducks here. You know, so I've had some, some good times. It's been fun. So, Rick, you, I'm looking around here. I mean, you have um, seats, you have bases, bats, jerseys a gumball machine. <laughs> you have a pretty wide variety of stuff. When you're collecting, do you have a criteria? Are there certain things that you look for? So for my Mets uh, collectibles, it's kind of a weird criteria. It's guys that I was really impressed with or ones that won a championship. Pete Alonso wouldn't make it in right now if he hadn't won a home run derby twice gotcha. in the rookie you year. Have you have some know. pretty so, high standards yeah. for you. <laughs> I do like to catch some of these guys near the end of their careers because I do like my seat backs with you know, lifetime stats on it and stuff like that. I do, and you go through streaks. You know, for a while it was bases and then you go seat backs and then, mm -hmm. you know, go to actual, you know, items that you pick up from flea markets and stuff like that. But you try to keep it, the items true to the heritage of the game, you know. Are there any items that stand out as some of your favorite pieces? My Seaver stuff, I was a big Seaver fan. I, I have a, a Bud Harrelson. Bud Harrelson in the late 60s actually uh, spons was sponsored by a company that made little bat chokes. Okay. And for those who don't know it, when they used to choke up, it was a little rubber thing that went on that. Uh -huh. So we, um, I actually had a half a dozen of those in the back of my store. I went down, I, I uh, brought them to Bud one day for a signing. And he goes, God, I haven't seen these in like 40 years. So he, um, he signed one and he, he got a little choked up and, you know, he goes, I've never showed my grandkids. I said, well, that's good. I have four more here. Take them to the grandkids, oh, you know. Great. So I was I went online. I found an actual picture from when they did the advertisement for that in the late 60s. You know, corny little things like that. I like. Do you have a favorite memory from a game that you've been to? So 1973, I was at a playoff game where Rusty Staub ran into the wall and broke his shoulder, but I had such a cheap ticket up in the right field top row that I didn't actually see him hit the uh, wall, but I do have the but ticket you were there. stop. Yeah, yeah. 
Rick, it's been so great hearing about your collection now. Can we go see it? Absolutely, let's take a look. You know, if you start here with a newspaper from 69, that's Seaver. That's what I remember as a kid after they won that all these, you know, drawings came out uh -huh. of all the Mets. You that know, came straight from? That was an old Daily News that he had, that Seaver had signed. The Gil Hodges, that was my mom's favorite as mm -hmm. Brooklyn Dodger, a future coach. 69 World Series, you know, a winning coach. I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but you used to be able to get a bat at a baseball game. So it's signed by all the 69 Mets. Uh, Duke Snyder was a Met. One of my first autographs was running into Duke Snyder down in Florida when I was at a beach uh, store convention. You know, and this is what I do now, like the seat backs I love. You get a, uh, Keith Hernandez or David Wright at the end of his career. Right because you get all their stats on them and you know I feel like more. this is such a great way to yeah. like document and have a, a piece. So my Piazza case this is kind of fun you know a jersey signed uh, again from my shop a couple of uh, Piazza gloves that he signed you know a helmet a uh, Hall of Fame ball some tickets cleats bat you know it's pretty well good with Piazza. Yeah. Tug McGraw, this was the ticket stub I talked about, being at the games in 73. 1973, wow. Do you have the price on there? <laughs> $5. I found the 1964 All-Star Game at Shea Stadium. It was $8.50 for the best ticket in the place. And they were sold at like Macy's and Bloomingdale's uh -huh. and stuff like, because you couldn't get tickets away back then. So this one I'm working on, I was working on, I did get Seaver on this one. I don't have Ryan on this one. I'm afraid to send it, to put it in the mail. So I'm hoping someday I get to actually meet, you know, Ryan in, yeah. in person. Limited Seaver numbers. Actually, a friend from the Upper Deck Company got me that one when we first did the signing. Wow, that's really cool. And David Wright, this came from uh, a Steiner. This is the one I sent to the Nolan Ryan Foundation. Mm -hmm. So again, lifetime stats. Very good to work with, so if you want something from Nolan Ryan, they make a donation to their foundation, okay. which I'm always happy to do. And uh, you get a nice piece of, piece of memorabilia yeah. that way. David Wright, pretty simple, so it's Santana. John Franco, I do have that base signed by Mookie Wilson and uh, Bill Buckner. So I thought I'd get it on a base rather than just a simple photograph, and yeah. stuff like that. This wall over here is really what we concentrated yes, most on the Mets on. So originally this section here was all Mets. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, I had started with the 1969 Mets and, try, and worked on getting a ball from every one of the players okay. on that team, including Gil Hodges. Wow. That was kind of neat to... So is that complete? So that is complete. I actually found a Hodges ball. It's pretty dirty and pretty old, but it's, you know, we'll take ball. it. Try to be a little creative. Mm -hmm. These are, these are all little pieces of the grandstands out in left field for the Mets. So They're cool. cut to size. But a couple of the pieces, like when I was at Crane Pools, he had this beautiful uh, drawing on his wall and it was written by, I think, the Daily News. He obviously wouldn't part with it, but he took pictures of it. And if you read some of the explanations of how great he was gonna be wow. in 62 and stuff, it was really a neat piece. So, so I this thought is I'd, one of the pieces yeah, you got directly? Directly from, from him, yeah. So that was. That was really neat. Howard Johnson. Nice. Again. Here, here you have a picture of Ed. Yep, I was with Ed. Nice. How many times have you guys? So I've met him about five times. I went to his house twice. No uh, big deal. Nice, yeah. <laughs> this was, again, new old stock, but I had Jerry Grody and Duffy Dyer mm -hmm. from the 69 Mets. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, they, were, they were actually a lot of fun. Yeah. They acted like they hung out every day. Oh, yeah. Now, and I, wow. you know, another Gil Hodges piece. Mm -hmm. that, so, you know, it's not, and I've made some mistakes. If you notice, Nolan Ryan here, number 34, on a Met jersey, he was never number 34. Uh, he was 30. That was a rookie mistake when okay. I first started collecting. Mets continue. So, if we this go, in, go into the little Met corner here, this is the 86 Mets. Mm -hmm. It was after uh, Carter passed away, so gotcha. we added an 8 by 10. Oh, this I is kind it. of different. This is a, a record that they cut back in the 60s. So it's Johnny Bench, Tom Seaver all signed it and they actually sang like Take Me Out to the really? Ball Game and stuff like that. So that's something that's a Have little bit different. Have you actually listened to it? Never. So this was, we talked about the 86 Mets uh, and you know, okay, not being at the game. This is the ticket stuff. At least you have the ticket That stuff. my friend gave me our, our first game at City Field. 
you know. This is your first City Field game? Yep, that was opening day. And uh, Gary Carter did coach the Long Island Ducks for a short period of time, oh. so we did get to um, see him. This is my work in progress. I just actually got Danny Heap this weekend. I think I need two more to finish out all the 86 mats okay. on that. That's a never ending battle because you start one and you start another and yeah. you're always trying to catch up with the players. A friend of mine who I go to Fenway Park with on a regular basis bought me that. So I've been trying to get all the 86 Mets to sign it. Maybe three names okay. left on that. Subway paraphernalia. So this came from actual That subway. was actually on a subway or a bus. It's all okay. the same. But that was around the opening of City Field. Gotcha. In the first half. Rick, your collection is not quite on the ceiling yet, but we're getting there, and this is where it all started for the Yeah, Mets. so the Mets' very first game was at the Polo Grounds. Everybody thinks it was Shea Stadium, yeah. but Shea didn't come till 64, so this is the very uh, first game for the Mets there, which I actually have a ticket from the last game at the Polo Grounds. Really? So, so picture from the yeah. first game, yeah, ticket from the last game. Ticket stuff, yeah. But I just wanted you to take a peek. I put some of the Mets jerseys around just to take a peek at. This is a piece of Shea Stadium. This oh, is one nice. of the outfield wall pieces. This is a city field, you know, when the city field had the long fences and they brought the fences in. Mm -hmm. This was actually a home run uh, marker on top of oh, one of the nice. walls. So someday that'll be signed. This is a mishmash. This is all catchers. And obviously, you know, some of my favorites, Gary Carter's on here, Jerry Grody's on here. We have a little spot here for Mike Piazza someday. Okay. But it's, you know, Mike, it's not just this Mets. Is for you. <laughs> All right, Rick, so this is the, the tavern. So this is the Evans, Evans Field, Field Tavern. Tavern this, of course. If there's a New York playoff game going on, I'm probably sitting in here watching the game. But this is, I wanted to show you a couple of projects okay. that I have. So this is some game used catches gear from Father's Day. It's probably wasn't used in the game, but it might have been used in the bullpen, most likely in the mm -hmm. bullpen. So I'm going to hunt that down, figure out who it okay. is, and have those sign. Sign it. You know, we're working on, we talked about the seat back. Yes. So this is the 86 Mets. Okay. So a little at a time, we're getting some of the players and you know, just working on that nice and easy. As a matter of fact, a couple days ago, we went to a, a signing and this is an actual real pitching rubber. Uh -huh. Signed by Johan Santana for his nice. first Mets no-hitter. There's a triple crown and a polo grounds piece behind you. Okay. So that's the ticket stub and a picture from the last game at the polo grounds when the Giants left town. So how do you go about getting so that was a fluke. That was actually uh, my business partner when he passed away. We were looking through the desk drawer and tucked away like it meant to be there for 50 years. On its side was a ticket stub and uh, sure enough when I authenticated it, it was the last uh -huh. game and you know I passed it around. That's probably one of the best pieces we have. Yeah, I love it. Rick, thank you so much for showing us your amazing collection. This is truly a great collection. <laughs> thank you. And I, and I appreciate you guys coming out. I mean, it really, uh, I hope it inspires some young kids to actually get started in collecting. You know, even from the smallest ticket stub to a baseball card to your first autograph. You know, put it away. Time flies. 20, 30 years goes by. You want those memories, especially if it's with family, friends. I think it's a great thing to get started in. So, you know, let's pass it on. Thank you.